Minister. Thank you, Ken Corley. Over the past number of weeks, the government has introduced unprecedented measures. The government introduced public health measures which are designed to flatten the curve and slow the spread of the disease to the greatest extent possible. Those measures, although necessary, have undoubtedly had a very significant and negative effect on our economy. Therefore, we have sought to lessen the economic impact through a number of actions. These include new and enhanced social protection payments for workers who, through no fault of their own, find themselves without an income, wage subsidy supports for employers to help them retain workers on their payroll, even as their trading income falls away, and financial supports, including loan guarantees, for businesses to help them cope with the impact of COVID-19 on their businesses and on their customers. We have also taken steps to protect people who may not be able to pay their rent or who have difficulties in keeping up with mortgage payments. These steps are extraordinary. They do come with a high financial cost, but these are extraordinary times. The budgetary costs and how we might have to pay for them in the future would be a cause of really significant concern, but they are little compared to the nightmare that some are living through at the moment if the necessary actions have not been taken to protect them. Our highest protection has to be that of public life, that of human health. Preventing the spread of the virus and working to mitigate its impact on our country. That is what we have to do, it is what we have endeavoured to do, and it is what we will continue to do. We passed two emergency pieces of legislation in the last couple of weeks, and at this point I want to thank all members of the Doyle for their cooperation in passing that legislation as we faced into such a crisis. In terms of social protection, we started by introducing an enhanced illness benefit scheme through the health, preservation and protection and other emergency measures in the Public Interest Act of 2020. The measures were designed to ensure that a person who is diagnosed with COVID-19 or who has had to self-isolate on medical grounds has immediate access to a higher level of support. This was increased at a rate of €305 Euro per week. It was subsequently increased to €350 Euro per week. In addition, we increased the qualified adult rate from €134.70 to €147 Euro to ensure that people with two adults in their family on a standard illness benefit would also receive the rate of €350. Euro. This rate of payment also applies to citizens who were unemployed due to the COVID crisis. We achieved this by the introduction of the pandemic unemployment payment, which is available to all Irish resident workers, including the self-employed, who lose their employment income due to COVID-19. Any job seekers with an adult dependent, including those who are already in receipt of a job seeker payment, also benefit from the increase in the rate of the qualified adult payment. We also eliminated waiting days from illness and job seeker payments. As businesses closed their doors in many areas of the economy and as workers were laid off, we all agreed it was important to find a mechanism that would enable employees to maintain their links with employers. We promptly introduced an employer refund scheme and introduced emergency legislation to put in place an enhanced support called the Temporary Wage Subsidy Scheme. This scheme, operated by the Revenue Commissioner, will see the Government contribute to eligible firms' payroll costs by paying them a wage subsidy to be passed on to the employee on a temporary basis. This is about protecting, insofar as we can, thousands of jobs that were created and maintained in recent years. When we emerge at the other side of this crisis, we hope that many employers will be able to start up from where they left off, 
without the need to recruit new staff. From an employee perspective, they are provided with job security. We have also taken other measures. This week, we extended the fuel allowance season by four weeks to the 9th of May. This provides many welfare recipients, including those who may need to cocoon with valuable support of €24.50 Euro per week. It means that many thousands of pensioners and people with disabilities will have one less thing to worry about and they can remain safe and warm in their homes. We have also moved to a fortnightly rather than a weekly payment cycle. We have extended the period for which payments can be held at on post offices to 90 days and agreed a temporary arrangement with on post to enable nominated agents to collect payments for welfare recipients where necessary. All these measures are designed to support those people most vulnerable to the effects of this virus to stay at home and to stay safe. They will come at a significant cost to the Exchequer. They have been implemented at pace. They are not perfect. They are not without risk. Removing risk, indeed, is impossible given the extraordinary scale of the challenge and the speed at which it materialised. Since the introduction of the pandemic payment in just two weeks, the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection has, up to last Friday, received and processed 389,000 claims for this payment alone. This is on the normal run of processing claims and payments that are made to pensioners, people with disabilities, other job seekers, and one-parent families, amongst others. The Department has been required to develop and implement new systems to create new functions. Normally, this would have taken months of coding and testing. It has also introduced a new claim application and processing functions, and it continues to provide ongoing communications to the public through print, through broadcast, and through social media as well as through very busy helplines. It has reassigned thousands of staff in order to ensure that people's claims are processed as quickly and as accurately as possible. I do want to say that the staff of the Department of Social Protection are not immune themselves to the virus either in terms of self-isolation, sickness and indeed bereavement. We have asked much of all of our civil servants, and indeed all across our public service. And they have responded to that task with an incredible sense of public duty. I want to take this opportunity to thank them for that. As we can all understand, responding to a challenge of this scale is not easy. There have been difficulties, but not as significant as some may have expected. The Department's focus has been on paying people promptly, paying as many eligible people as possible, to ensure that the state can play its role in cushioning our citizens from the devastating impact of loss of employment. Corla, the various measures outlined were introduced to protect our people. Together, we face an extraordinary challenge. In these uncertain times, given the anxiety and given the stress felt by our country in relation to risk to their health and to their future economic outlook, it was, I believe, crucial that we did all we could to reassure citizens. We acted fast so as not to further create a heightened sense of fear a heightened sense of unease in communities. We may not have got, and we did not get, everything perfect, but much of what we did was, I believe, good. And I think we have shown again that this country can rise to significant challenges and that its people can and do support each other at a time of great need. And in doing so, we have laid a strong foundation from which to recover from this crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. We move now.